cats. You like cats? Yeah. I, before I had a cat, I said that I didn't like cats. I don't, I don't ever remember person. you saying that you don't like cats. Yeah, I did. I, I maybe chose not to say it around you because it made me feel I bad. like cats. I like dogs better, yeah. but I also like cats a lot. Yeah. Because I like dogs a whole lot. Once, once we got our cat... And like I figured him out, mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh okay. I think they're I just different. didn't understand. Yeah, cats. they're fucking cats are weird as shit. It's so weird, so weird. Cats are super, super weird. Dogs are so I love easy them. To read. They are just their own things. Their brains work way different. Um, but cats are cute. They're cute. They're so cute. They can be very affectionate Those and very little... loyal, and they listen to you. And you can teach them tricks, and you can do. I mean, have we really tried? No. 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 Not no. at all. Launch just kind of does his damn thing. Yeah. Which is fine because his other option was death. It's funny. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I'm glad he's doing Almost his. Almost instant death. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. he's doing his thing. It's funny because if you like said that about a dog, people go, like, oh my God, like. You don't have him trained, or he can't well, do anything. But we did cat. try. We did try in the beginning. You were trying to walk him on a leash and do all this shit, and he was just like, "It didn't work." No, it did not work. Absolutely not. So when I tell you, I did not know how to cat. That yeah, tells no. You she thought that know. it was just a smaller dog type thing, and it's just no. No, but I saw someone do it. No, I you saw just someone do it. No. Yes. But sometimes cats can swim. Evidently. Lindsay Nicole, uh, known from doing features on Casual Geographic's video, at least to us, that's how we got into her. Yes. Uh, just put out a video. You, Nikki, why would you even think that? Why would it's you even bring me. that? Why it's would you? Me. Why would you bring that into this? What? I didn't say anything about that, and you made this fucking weird, dude. Stop. No, you you said that weird. I, I didn't say that weird. Okay. Stop. I, this. I, this. Look, this is your mistake, okay? You're like, oh, I was like, I don't know if I should do it or not. And you're like, yeah, go ahead and do it. And now this is the result. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, tiny cats that can swim with a bonus. With a bonus. Yeah, I'm curious about these tiny swimming cats. Yeah. Because usually they don't like to swim. Yeah, I mean, I think all cats can swim. They just don't prefer Rather it. not, So, yeah. like, are these type of Water-seeking cats, yeah. cats that want to swim? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Be all ready? Right. Let's go. Let's go. I love re when I record half of the video and then realize that I did not turn the microphone on. Fucking love that. Damn. Okay. Cats are often thought of as little guys that don't like water. Creatures that are willing to get violent over a little spritz. But that is it's not true. always the case. The cat family is a big one with all different types of species that have evolved to all different types of environments, including ones that enjoyed a frequent dip so much they evolved semi-aquatic traits. What? I'm going to introduce you to two of these cat species. It was supposed to be three, but turns out the third one I had planned for is not semi-aquatic. It's not actually down like that, even though it looks like it is. I'm going to introduce <laughs> you to it anyway as an extra bonus. And then there's another okay. extra bonus at the end that's going to blow your fucking mind. So okay. I got two bonuses for you today. So buckle up, grab a snack while I introduce you to some super sick tiny cats. As always, you already know what the fuck is going on. Don't want to <laughs> bug my neighbor. As always, you already know what the is going on. Gotta get the general information out of the way. Cats belong to the family Felidae within the order Carnivora. Cat family has been around for about 30 million years that we know of and evolved to become some of the most successful predators on the planet. You'll notice whenever we talk about peak mammalian evolution, it takes place sometime after 66 million years ago. Mammals have been around much longer than that, but weren't able to really find themselves until after the dinosaurs got fucking nerfed by the asteroid. Before then, they were pretty much just rats living in the ground. Or Gross. In the trees, trying to make ends meet without getting fucking crushed to bits by a giant lizard. I'll talk more about this in my History of Life series coming up, which I have mentioned multiple times. It's coming, where I'm gonna go through each of the periods in Earth's history, one period per episode. I just threw that in now because honestly, dinosaurs have been on my mind because I went <laughs> to the Natural History Museum the other day and it was really cool. I'd never been there before and I liked it a lot and I had a great time. Also, by the way, I'm 5'4". I'm not 4'1". <laughs> I'm not 4'11". I'm medium height. The bones were big and this base just so happens to be unnaturally large. I the average height for an American woman. I looked it up. So anyway, <laughs> since their appearance about 30 million years ago, cats have spread out all over the planet to occupy a variety of carnivorous
diverse niches. Some filled the roles of apex predators, like the big cats you're familiar with, the lions, the tigers, the leopards, while others settled into more modest roles, catching rodents, birds, and even sometimes fish. Even sometimes mm. a lot of fish, like a shit ton of fish, and got real comfortable getting their little paws wet. Both semi-aquatic species I'll be introducing you to today have partially webbed feet that help them swim scoop up fish. Well, this adaptation might seem like a small one. It serves as the perfect segue to explain why I wanted to make this video in the first place. We've got a little purpose section today. We've gone through the evolution of whales from land to water in this video, and you might be familiar with that transition in other groups like marine reptiles and whatnot. Because they took place over such long periods of time, millions upon millions of years, it can be kind of hard to wrap your head around like, how the fuck did this turn into this yeah. and can lead to pretty major misunderstandings about what that transition looked like. You know, like one day flippers appeared and now orcas are fucking up boats in Europe. No, <laughs> that's not how it happened. Dare I say a misunderstanding like this can lead people to deny evolution altogether. The small changes building on top of each other over a really long time to make big changes can be kind of hard to visualize. So I figured why not make a video on some species that are just starting, not just starting, but you know, just just starting to evolve some of these small changes. And these species just so happen to be cute, tiny cats. This is not a cute animal video. This is an evolution video, an evolution of cute, tiny cats video, but an evolution video nonetheless. Am I saying that these cats are gonna fully transition to water and become little, tiny, little kitty whales? No, I'm not saying shit, but that would be cool as fuck. That would okay, be so <laughs> I'm just cool. itching at this point to see the first water cat. So allow me to introduce you to our teeniest, tiny little guy for today, the flat-headed cat. Yes, that is their name. Due to the flat nature of wow, their head, look they're found at in Thailand, thing. Malaysia, Borneo, and Sumatra, and they get to about three and a half pounds. Please do not lose your shit. This is some serious stuff. Let's run over the quick facts and make this species semi-aquatic. Flat-headed cats have partially webbed Whoa. feet, like I had mentioned. They also have slightly yeah. backwards-facing teeth to keep their slippery prey in their mouth. And they've been seen swimming across rivers a good portion of that time fully underwater. One like record of a flat-headed cat in captivity noted that the cat showed more interest in a mouse in a pond than on land. They like wet mouse more than dry mouse. Stick into the brain. Flat-headed cats, like many small cats, are extremely elusive. Not much more is known about because they seem to tend to stay away from human altered habitats and they're just so little, can't even see them or you mistake them for a rodent. Even with developing research technologies like better camera traps, which scientists set up in different areas to figure out what's going on there, you just don't see them. The flat head cats constantly, M-I-A. That's Quay's feeder, it just went off. Now she's trying to figure out how to get to it with all this shit everywhere. Wait, real quick, before you eat, you wanna say hi? <laughs> Aww. Very round headed cat. Now I got cat hair all over my face. Yes. Very on brand for the video. Okay, the flat head cat is constantly MIA. Some researchers came up with a possible explanation for why this is, and it's the cutest thing ever. Objectively, it's objectively very cute. In 2013, they had placed camera traps all over a forest reserve in Malaysia. One camera was placed about 15 inches off the floor, which I believe was the average height for all the cameras. And one night it got knocked over by a Southern pigtailed macaque. This guy <laughs> to a height of just four inches off the ground. And what do you know? Two flat-headed cats, not one, but two got captured on camera, which led the researchers to speculate. The cameras are too high up. You know. I'm something of a scientist. <laughs> too little and just walk right under them, which is why we never see them. This might seem pretty obvious and you might be thinking, well, why not just put the cameras lower if you're trying to find little guys? Well, yeah. camera traps are often not species specific. Like if you're setting up cameras, it tends to be to look at a lot of different shit and sometimes more concentrated to the larger species like tigers or leopards. And then you just happen to find out other stuff about the other little guys because they're just there and so you see them and you learn about them too. But I say, put the fucking cameras on the floor. We don't know yeah. a lot about them. They seem to be endangered. They're listed as endangered and we gotta save them so we can see how this evolution plays out. Please, let's yes. figure out what we gotta do to save them. Put the cameras on the floor. Also, there was some good news from that study because the camera happened to be about a mile from a palm oil plantation. Stay with me. Flat-headed cats were initially thought to be extremely specific, like, not tolerating human altered habitats at all, which is unfortunately a bad thing because that's just not how the world is working right now. And so when you find out that an animal is actually closer to a human altered habitat than you initially thought, it suggests they might be more adaptable, more tolerant to changes in their environment, which is a good thing. <laughs> now that I said that out loud, that all sounded kind of depressing. More research is <laughs> yeah, needed. It the is. next water cat on our lineup is called the fishing cat, another one that is very unbranked. They're actually closely related to the flat-headed cat through a common ancestor that was alive about 4 million years ago. They're also found in Southeast Asia, but they are larger than their cousins, like mm. 10 times larger. They're about 30 pounds, like the size of a bot. Damn. So not exactly a tiny cat, but definitely still a little guy. Fishing cats, surprise, surprise, like 
fish. They live in wetland habitats, so they can eat Those fish are cute. and end up with a diet of about 76% fish. The other portion consists of animals like birds, rodents, some lizards. Like their cousins, they have partially webbed feet that help them scoop up fish and also walk through their muddy wetland habitats, like big snowshoes, oh. lots of surface area. Another feature that supports the fishing cat's semi-aquatic lifestyle is their dual layered coat. The layer closest to their skin is super dense and thick and actually keeps their skin dry <laughs> while they're swimming. And then the other layer, the outermost layer, is what you see. Those spots and stripes display their lovely pattern. They also have a short tail. They have a sick pattern, acts as a pattern, rudder dude. while they're swimming. There are lots of videos online of fishing like cats hunting cheetahs. in the water, even kittens attempting to do so, where they're just like, best snatch fish right out of the walk and even plunge their entire head and torso in because they don't give a fuck. We understand more about their behavior, luckily, because they are not as elusive as their cousins, the flat cats. They actually have more of a present relationship with humans. Like most wildcat species and other animals, the fishing cat population is impacted by a lot of different factors, like the illegal wildlife trade, habitat loss, and human wildlife conflict. Actually, before I go any further, I just wanna say, I'm never gonna talk about human caused threats to species, like the negative stuff, without providing any solutions to those problems that you can become a part of or that you have access to. I hate when nature documentaries do that shit, you know, where they're like, look at this super cool animal, look at all the cool stuff it can do. Also, it's going extinct and you can make a difference. And then they end the fucking movie. They give you nothing. I'm like, cool. Now I'm depressed. You give me nothing and <laughs> yeah, you set it up to me. Yeah. And what now I'm sad. To do? I that's genuinely true. think that's so lame because like 99% of the time there is something that you can do or an organization that is doing something yeah. that you can get involved in and they can just fucking name it. Like, why are you gatekeeping conservation? Of course, education is an important aspect of it. You know, like being aware of the species existing and like the problems that they have, the solutions are just as important. So anyway, I'm not gonna do that to you. If I talk about the problems, I'm gonna offer a solution and give it to you straight. So. The fishing cat, like I had mentioned, is often involved in human wildlife conflict. People fearing them because they might be mistaken for one of the bigger cats, like leopards, just maybe seen as a smaller individual, and so they get killed. They're often persecuted for killing poultry or other animals that provide someone economic value. This is a common problem with really any predators that live somewhat near human settlements. You yeah. might be familiar with the debate with wolves here in the US. People just don't want them around for safety reasons and economic reasons, killing livestock, huge economic loss, or potentially hurting or killing people. And so for the fishing cat, this problem can definitely be solved through local education, going to communities that experience this wildlife conflict and providing information on the ecology, the behavior of the species, explaining they're not a threat to humans at all and helping to mend that relationship. I found an organization while I was researching called the Fishing Cat Conservation Alliance that does just that. They also aim to conduct research well, to good. better understand how yeah, to best conserve awesome. the species and they're involved in a lot of partner projects as well. So if you're interested in getting involved or even just sending them a quick donation so they can get their shit done, I'll put the link below. All right, this next cat, as I had mentioned, I thought was a semi-aquatic cat, but is not. Oh, yeah, it's the called bugs. the Jaguar Wendy or Whoa, the otter cat. Whoa, look at that. Otter. I've been so saying so otter cat for some reason in the my whole head, time. I was like, oh, they're semi-aquatic because they look like a fucking otter. They're called a fucking otter cat. But yeah. No, shit happens, I guess. I'm still going <laughs> to talk about them because look at them. <sighs> yeah, look at him. him. No semi-aquatic adaptations to take note of here. So just sit back and relax. Unless I somehow missed all of them while I was researching. Now I'm doubting myself. See, <laughs> this is what happens. I literally can't believe, like, how the fuck is this cat not semi-aquatic? I, okay. So anyway, the Jaguarundi is found all throughout Central and South America, all the way mm. from the border of the US and Mexico to South Central Argentina. They get to about 20 pounds and like to eat small vertebrates, particularly mammals such as rats and other rodents, really whatever it can get its little paws on. Despite having jaguar in their name, the Jaguarundi is most closely related to pumas or cougars or mm. mountain lions, the cat with many names. You might remember from my cheetah video that cheetahs, pumas, and jaguarundis share a common ancestor that was alive about 6.7 million years ago. And North America. Then there was a split and the ancestors of the Jaguarundis and Pumas headed south and the cheetahs headed west over the Bering Strait land bridge. So within the cat lineage, wow. Jaguarundis and Pumas are very closely related to each other and you can kind of see similarities in how they look. The resemblance, it makes sense. Jaguarundis are just definitely more pointy. You know, they're like an otter crossed with a sharp pencil. I've never yeah. worked with Jaguarundis, but I've worked with plenty of Pumas and they're feisty as fuck. They spit like nobody's business. What the Based on hell? pictures alone, I'm getting even more of a menacing vibe from yeah. Jaguar Wendy's. I feel like all the attitude of a cougar was just condensed into this small package that is the Jaguar Wendy, just ready to fucking Big explode with absolutely no notice. You'll be happy to know they're considered least concerned on the IUCN. They're just chilling. That's really all I Good. wanted to say about them because they are not a semi-aquatic cat, and this is a semi-aquatic cat video, so I'm just gonna end that there. Okay, so now, remove the Jaguar Wendy from your head. Think back to just the flat-headed cat. 
and a fishing cat. Two cats that made the transition to the semi-aquatic lifestyle and have adaptations to show for it. Hopefully this helps to kind of visualize what this early transition looked like for the ancestors to whales or marine reptiles or fucking seals. Yeah, seals had to evolve too. Well, why did these changes happen in the first place? Like if they are land animals, why not stay within the confines of land? Well, nature doesn't work like that. It never gives shit to you straight. And often these changes happen because there's no other choice. Maybe typical prey sources are disappearing or there's too much competition with another species. All it really takes is one behavioral switch in a population to potentially have lasting impacts on their lineage. And of course, I have a cat example of this, the bonus cat. One need not be introduced because they are literally the most famous animal on the planet, the lion. Yeah, there's a population of lions that have started to hunt seals. Let's start from what? the beginning. Once upon a time, a population of lions lived at the skeleton coast in Namibia and hunted seals and hung out on the beach, chilling all day until the 1980s, when local farmers wiped out the population, human wildlife conflict. The lions abandoned the coast for 20 years and returned in 2002, but they weren't hunting seals. They just went back to their usual ungulate shit. They were just doing the usual antelope song and dance. Were the sea lions gone forever? Well, since 2018, a small population of them started hunting seals again due to a drought that annihilated their ungulate prey source. It even timing hmm. when seals came in on waves and attacking them right at the shore. A team of researchers was able to fit them with tracking collars, which track them. It's a common practice for observational research of different animals, especially carnivores, and it doesn't negatively impact them at all. But because of this, researchers have been able to track their whereabouts, figure out what they're eating, see potential new behaviors that they've never seen before, for, and it also prevents potential interaction with visitors, which is a good thing. They're able to tell when the lions enter a certain area so they can block off that part of the coast, keep people away from them. This is a necessary thing because they have had interactions with people before. And one time, one of the lions charged a vehicle and another time, one of the lions had a kill and got startled by some fishermen walking by and dragged the prey two and a half miles inland. Obviously that has a negative impact on the research and the researchers want to keep them at the coast, see what the fuck happens. So they're trying to avoid that. This lion population serves as a perfect example of a behavior change that could end up impacting the lineage over millions of years. Am I saying that's gonna happen? No, but it's cool as fuck to think about. Like what characteristics will be more beneficial to this population in their gene pool? Will they be drastically different from the inland lions and lead to unique adaptations? It is fun to wonder. It is fun to speculate. And that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next long form video coming out next week. Obviously I needed a little break after the octopus video because that fucking <laughs> wore me out. This one revitalized me. So we are back on track. You can check out my weekly live streams on Patreon. Keep up with my daily short form content on TikTok and Instagram. For now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya. Those are always so fun. That flathead cat was so cute, man. It looks so bad. I like when that it's, thing. You know, like when cats get mad and they like pin their ears backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It was like always like that. Yeah, but it was cool as shit so looking. I just like connected something when we watched this. What? So we watched one of her videos. It was the jelly. No, the crab one. Crab, crab, crab. Um, we watched the crab video, mm -hmm. and you were like, "Yeah, we we like met her through like not met her, found her, found yeah. her." through um casual geographic casual. <laughs> but we actually have watched a video with her in it before and i'm when? like i'm like 90 percent sure when moist critical went to the conservation and like held that spider the cockroaches oh or whatever. that was her i'm pretty sure that was her well i'll be goddamn so we watched that maybe like, it was months ago huh so very interesting very cool. well Lindsay nicole congratulations on your on your yeah. rise and and uh glad to be able to watch this stuff i think it's really interesting and i do think that it's awesome that she provided yes. a resource to to, to help the the uh the cats yeah. because you know that does suck i agree with her yeah it's unfair they're saying that that was a different woman oh man yeah are you saying all women are the same, Nikki? No. But she just, maybe just because she's talking about animals and it's a conservation. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway. No. Um, I like. I want. I want a three and a half pound cat. A three and a half pound cat. That's what that flathead cat was. The first one. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. I don't think it was super super cute. I think the little spotted one was cute. That one. Yeah, that looks. That like one's the one that's that's really tiny. Because like, the other one's them, way bigger. Show them. This, this is, is. I think this is so cute. You would have that in a three yeah. and a half. You would be like. Yeah. Go 
God, it would be so mean. Yeah, it just looks Come pissed. On, it just dude. looks pissed off. No. I like the little condensed cheetah. No. Yeah, what do you mean no? That one was way cuter. I mean, not really the compared one, to that. The one at the end, the otter one. You go one, to town, no. The otter one looked like no. a meme. Like, you know, like it didn't even look like a real animal. Yeah, I didn't know there was all these wild different cats out there. Like, how many different cats are there? Is it just like an epic fuck ton that I'm unaware yeah. of? Well, I don't think that I know a lot hmm. about cats. And here I thought I knew pussy. I don't. <laughs> I don't have okay, a clue. Okay, listen. Whenever she was talking about, like, how some of the cats are, they have, like, the dense fur yes. to protect it. To and, like, the webbed wet. toes and mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, we're starting to, like, see mm-hmm. and know that there are cats that gravitate toward mm-hmm. the water or at least hunt in the water. Yeah. Um, whenever I think of evolution, I think everything's just like done. Like whenever I think about it, I'm like, oh, that can't turn into something no, else. it's like stuff just slow right. shit over I time. I know, right. Mm-hmm. Which I can think about in the past, but I can never think of like things evolving into more than they already are. Yeah. It's just weird to think it. Like, I'm just so, such it a little, little speck it floating is. through the wind. And, uh, it will not yeah. happen in our time. No. But throughout, yeah. you know, millions of years. Yeah. 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 It's just... Yeah. It just kind of feels like I I am so important to my being. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just one of those things that's like interesting, but what the fuck is it for us to know, really? Um, that cat's not turned into <laughs> little otter cats. We'll I don't know. We'll never see it. We'll never know. It just it's is cool what it is. About, but Chad. it is cool to think about. I agree. I think it's fun to think about. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, um, it's even cooler to think about what if we had a little flat-headed cat and it was sweet and it wasn't mean. Um, it would be three and a half pounds well, of full, did, like, attack. A little, I just I imagine it in this little circle. I know. D- did you have one of those things? Uh, it was a toy from when we were growing up. I never had up. a toy. No, I never had one of those. <laughs> it things. was like a ball, and it had like a tail, and it was like it was like a dog toy or something. No, I don't know what I'm talking about. No. Nope. Well, anyway. Anyway, Lindsay Nicole, great video. Tiny cats that can swim with a bonus. Very I cool. appreciated this. It was very fun, and I learned some shit. Me uh, we too. Li- we learn stuff on these we videos, do. man. Uh, I so never the- like thought that. No. that was- but we do. I think that, that these videos have all been great so far. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting into the next one. Thank you guys so much for checking out this one with us and hanging out. Yeah. We will see you next see time. See you guys. Bye.